We're happy to have with us today Annette Meyer from uh, Technische Universität Dort Dortmund, Germany. <laughs> and uh, she will speak to us on the subject of computing difference Galois groups over FQ of ST. I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation to speak here. I will talk about difference equations and positive characteristic, and I will first recall how to define Galois groups for such equations, and then I will speak about um, how to compute these groups. By computing, I don't mean algorithms, but I mean that I will give some criteria that can help to compute the group. And then I will show how we can apply these criteria to the inverse problem, meaning given a group, can we find a difference equation with that group? Okay, so. So in the different Skyward theory, your base field is equipped with a homomorphism signal. and we call those elements that are invariant constant. These are the elements fixed by a sigma. For example, the standard example would be, or one standard example would be to consider rational functions over complex numbers with the shift operator. And here your constants are just the complement. But for my talk, um, the standard examples will be the positive characteristic. So one is a rational function field over this finite field FQ. And the homomorphism sigma is just a Frobenius, which sends every element to its qth power. And the elements fixed by this homomorphism are just a Q. Okay, and then we can expand this homomorphism by adjoining a constant. So we are joining KT such that sigma maps T to T, and then we get constants FQ of T. These are the two basic examples um, of different fields in characteristic P. This one is obviously important in algebra. And this one is also um, important in um, arithmetic number theory, where they study objects called T motifs. And these T motifs can be described as uh, difference models over such a field. So a difference equation. Linear difference equation over such a field. Similar to differential equation, we have um, like we apply the homomorphism on the left side. So this is a matrix. A is a matrix. Invertible. And Y consists of N indeterminates. And out of some technical reasons, I will write it inverse here. It doesn't really matter, right? Where you write the example, it's zero. You can have the one by one equation. Over where sigma is the shift operator, and it's the defining equation for the gamma function. And in our case, in characteristic zero, we could, for example, study the matrix. some element in our base field. Okay, and if you are given such a difference equation, you can define what a PV ring, a Picard's your ring for that equation is. So 
or PUD ring is a difference ring extension that is generated by a fundamental solution matrix and the inverse of its determinant. So by the, by the entries of a fundamental solution matrix, the inverse of the determinant. Okay, and fundamental solution matrix means that the columns contain a complete set of solutions. Right? So each column is a solution, so we have this equation. And similar to the differential case, we don't want to have any constants. And the ring has to be different which means that there is no non-trivial idea that is stable under sigma. So, in general, it's very hard to show that 2 and 3 hold unless you have algebraically closed constants. If you have algebraically closed constants, then you can just erase 2 and 3 is enough. But, in, you know, these constants are not algebraically closed, so it's usually hard to show unless your PV ring is an integral domain. So and that's different from the differential case. In the differential case, the PV rings are always integral domains, but not in a difference. So but if we say if it isn't integral domain, then these conditions 2 and 3 are equivalent to the fraction field not having new constants. So the strategy to find a PV ring that's an integral domain is to find the fundamental solution matrix inside the difference field extension that doesn't have new constants. If you can find such a fundamental solution matrix, then adjoining this will always give you a PV ring. Okay, and all PV rings in my talk will be integral domains. I will only construct PV rings that are integral domains. Okay, so it might be that there doesn't exist a PV ring for an equation, but we will only consider equations where, there is, where we make sure that there is one. So example, here in this um, positive uh, characteristic zero case, over this field with the shift operator, you consider this equation, then if you join the gamma functions, Inside the field of um, neuromorphic functions, then you get a PV ring. In this case, B, where this is our base field and sigma is the Frobenius, then this equation on the left hand side is just every entry um, to its qth power. So what it really is, it is a system of algebraic equations. So therefore, in this case, you can always find the fundamental solution matrix inside the algebraic closure. matrix inside the algebra closure, actually the separable algebra closure, and you adjoin that and it's already a field, so you don't need to adjoin any. So this is a field extension inside here, and it's a finite Galois extension. Conversely, if you are given any finite Galois extension of this field, this field, then you can always obtain in this way as a PV ring of a difference equation. 
because in positive characteristic, if you have a defining polynomial, you can somehow rewrite this as an additive polynomial where all exponents are powers of Q, and for such an equation, you have a translation to matrix equations. Similar to the differential case, how you translate a differential operator to a matrix differential equation. Okay, so um, this PV theory contains, in this way, the finite Galois theory over this field. Okay, so now the Galois groups. What about the constants? The constants? Yes. Oh, it, here, in, inside here. The Frobenius yeah. um, still has constants f q and q. The only things fixed up by the Frobenius is an f q itself. Therefore, there are no new constants in this. Okay, so let's say we have an equation and we have found a PV ring. Constants k, then we can define the Galois group as a group scheme where you consider the automorphisms that commute with sigma. Okay, so and what does that mean with the underlines so of the k rational points are defined to be just the automorphisms of R over F. And we want them to commute with sigma because we want them to um, uh, map the solutions to solution. Right? And then this doesn't quite contain enough in information on the group unless K is algebraically closed. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you need to do this with this group scheme. And it's not a big deal that for any um, K algebra S, you can extend this in this way. So you can, can think about the Galois group as being this object with a slight extension. And as in a differential case, this is an affine group scheme represented by the constants of R tensor R. And it's an affine group scheme of finite type. And if the ring is separable, so it's a separable F algebra. Then uh, this R tensor R and then constants is a reduced ring, so therefore it's a linear algebra. Okay. And you have similar effects in a differential case, so you know that there's a natural embedding of G into GLM by the action of the solutions. You know that the dimension of the group is the same as the transcendence degree of R. You um, also have a Galois correspondence between inter intermediate sigma fields and service closed subgroups of G. So for example, In this example, you can you know that the gamma function is transcendent, so the Galois group, which is a subgroup of GL1, because this is an order one equation, is of dimension one, so it's all of GL1. Okay. In this example, we will later see that we can find a suitable F such that there exists a PD ring for this equation and such that the Galois group is SL2.
criterions to compute G. Where G is the Galvani of some difference equation. So from now on, I will only talk about characteristic P. And the base field is always this one. This one has to the power, and P is a constant, and K is the field of constants, which is a pure joint. Now, let's say we are given a different equation A over F, and we assume that the, um, all entries of A are in this field, and we assume that no entry has denominator that is divided by T. It's not, it's not a it's not really a loss of generality because you can usually you can, can do base changes to to obtain it. So we assume that no denominator is divided by t. And I do that because I want to be able to write a as a power series in t. Okay, so now the first issue is that we need to make sure that there exists a PD ring for a. extension without new constants where we can find a fundamental solution matrix. And I, I write down the field that, um, where we look for this um, solution matrix. So we consider on this field the S, an s adic absolute value. And let's just do it on F of S. Basically, you look how many times an element is divided by s. And then you do the, the values, then for example, 2 up to the minus this number. Okay, and we can, can extend this value to an absolute value on the And now, we look for solutions inside the power series in t. But the problem is, if you consider all power series in t and you get new constants, because then every element in here would be a constant. So we only look at con converging power series. So let me define what I mean by converging power series. So we consider power series in T with coefficients here. The limit of these elements AI is zero of the values of AI. Right, and in this way, um, so an AI is easy. And then if you have an element that's a power series over FQ, so as all non-zero elements in FQ have absolute value 1, if this is um, true, then only finitely many co coefficients don't vanish, so you only have a polynomial. <coughs> so therefore, you don't have new constants in here, and we take the field of fractions of that to be the field where we look for our fundamental solution matrix.
can show that this is a reference field extension, right? How do you, um, what, what is sigma doing on such a power series? It just acts on coefficients. And it's a separable extension, a separable um, difference field extension with no new constants. find a fundamental solution matrix for our A inside L, we know that it generates a PD ring. And um, this proposition says that if you write A as a power series in T, and the coefficients converge fast enough to zero, then you can always find such a fundamental solution matrix. So we can write we write all entries of A as power series in T, and then we get these coefficient matrices A i. And if there exists an epsilon smaller than one, such that the AI is the matrixes, right? Yes. Oh, sorry. Thank you. N by N matrix. So, um, and if you have that such that every entry in the ith coefficient matrix has um, value smaller than epsilon up to the i, so this is the maximum uh, norm, then there exists such a such a fundamental solution matrix in N. And in particular, this means that this ring where you join all You mean A in worth Y? In particular, then we have a PV ring for our equation A. Okay, and you can prove this is in the following way. So you would like to find this matrix such that sigma of y, so that's just sigma of y to the coefficients, equals a inverse y. And on these coefficient matrices, sigma is just a Frobenius. So for each i, this is again an algebraic equation, and you can use a multidimensional version of Hensel's lemma to show that you can solve the, all of these equations for all i. And also that um, these y i's then converge in the same way as i, as a does. And then you then you actually find your fundamental solution matrix in this ring, not just the field. Example to apply this. Write this as a power series in T, like this. And if you set epsilon the absolute value of S, that's smaller than one, then AI is this matrix for I greater than zero, and then AI satisfies this. Um, so, this proposition one says that there exists a PV ring for A. Okay, 
So, and now that we have this class of different situations where equations where we know that there exist PV rings, we can talk about their Galois groups. And now I will give, give upper and lower bounds for these Galois groups. is in proposition one. And in addition, um, we assume that A is contained in some linear algebraic group H. So in H of some linear algebraic Find over F T, and then the Galois group G is contained in H. Similar to um, the differential case where you say that if the matrix is in contained in the D algebra, then the Galois group is contained in the group. And if the constants are algebraically closed, then this is a well-known criterion that is true for any group, not just over a Q, for any group over the constants. However, the proof doesn't transfer to the case where the algebra, uh, where the constants are not algebraically closed. So I, I don't know whether it holds in general or not. Or not. But in this special case for these special difference fields, it's not hard to show that it holds by um, reducing it to a situation finite Galois theory over FQ, where you can um, apply the Lang isogeny. And what's the uh, what's the size of the matrices in uh, H? Well, H is a subgroup of GLN. Otherwise, it's really same man, same man as A. Yes. Of course, of course, yes, of course. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Okay, and um, well, I mean, the embedding can be right. So right. This is in actually yeah. in. Yeah. Okay. I, in. Yeah. A natural assumption. So here, here, here is in GLN. And what what you need to do is so we we found one fundamental solution matrix, and we. Um, Need to find a constant matrix such that so, if we yes. So the so the um, so the importance of prop T prop proposition two is certainly not H is GLN but something restricted, right? Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. If H is GLN and it's not then it's nothing right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. But for example, we would see here we would apply it to SL two. Right. Right. And then we know it's a subgroup of SL two. So so, usually, so so application is to find this H. Really. Usually you apply yeah. this to the group H mm -hmm. where you. Uh, hope that it's the right group. Right? Actual G, you mean? Yes. You, okay. you, you hope that G equals H, and then right. this way. Right. Okay. And uh, so you say defined over FQ, but. Uh, uh, I don't know what, what, um, <laughs> whether it holds for any F, over K. It's not FQT, huh? It's yeah, FQ. Right, right. It's not. I, I think it might be true for this field as well, which would be. Which, which would be known if the field was algebraically closed, but I don't know. And for my applications, it's enough to have groups over FQ, because I only consider those. OK. But, but in, the, in the example, yes. you have G is actually defined over FQT, right? Right. G, G, is, um, G is defined over FQ of T. I only do this for H, which is and I don't know whether it's true for H of FQ or T or So um, Because the thing is, if the constants are not algebraically closed, you sometimes have these twisted examples, for example, SO2 and GL1, which are different groups, 
but could be the, both groups of PV extensions for the same ring, uh, for the same equation. So a, yeah. So. Right. In this example, we know by now by this proposition two that uh, um, we know that G is containing SA two because A has determinant one. So you apply this proposition with H equals SA two. Erase the right side. You mean for that when you say G is SL2, you mean for that particular F, which is 1 over 1 minus TS? Actually, for, for any F. No. For any F. Yeah, for any F such that there exists a PV ring. Oh, okay. Yeah, the government oh, one, yeah, right. Yeah. right yeah. Okay, so now, this was an upper bound, right? Um, now I give you a lower bound on the Garvago, which says that certain elements are contained in the Galva group. And hopefully you, you can find enough elements to, to make it generate the group you, you mm -hmm. um, think it is. So the bounds are on the dimension? No. No. Okay. The bound is, I, you give me an equation, I give you certain elements that conjugates of these elements are contained in the Galva group, which gives you a lower bound in the Galva group. Let's say asking what you mean, what do you yeah. mean by lower bound? How do you measure lower bound and upper bound? Um, What's this measurement? The group? Oh, the, here the, the measurement is, is the, the group. The group G is bounded by H. Oh, okay. Here, oh, here, oh, here, yeah, oh, that's oh, here okay, it will okay, be, right, yeah. it's measured by some subgroup that's generated by it's elements oh, okay, and it's bounded by groups. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's bounded by groups. Okay. Yeah. So to give you the bound dimension, you get bounded by groups, right? Okay, so let's assume that assumption for position one holds so that we know that there's a PV ring, and we also assume that we have this. Of course, you can just say H is G and N, and this is no condition. Okay, and then, I claim that if you consider your matrix A, and you have these S's here, and you specialize these S to alphas in FQ, then the conjugate of the matrix you get is contained in the Galva group. Yeah. Okay. So you can only do that if S minus alpha isn't in any denominator, right? So that you don't divide by zero. But if alpha is such that you can specialize a via S maps to alpha, then you get a matrix in FQ, G, and the statement is then the Galva group contains the conjugate of this matrix. Conjugating matrix is contained in H. For example, H could be G and N and would be no. Say not much. But um, and G uh, it's the rational points over power series over F. 
Is there no bar? In, is there a bar on over FQ? Yes, there's a, there's a bar. Right? Because what you do is you show that this specialization extends to a specialization on the PV ring. And this conjugating matrix will be the specialization of your fundamental solution matrix. That's where this bar comes from, because the fundamental solution matrix has coefficients in the separable closure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if you specialize this, you get here. Okay. Now, it could be that Q is 2, so there are only two possible ways to specialize alpha, so that doesn't give you that much information. Therefore, more generally, you can do this for any place, not just the places of degree 1. So if you have a place of degree G, which just means that it's an irreducible polynomial of degree D in S. And then you can specialize modulus polynomial you get a matrix in FQ D of P unless this polynomial divides some denominator, then you can do this. But for all but finitely many places you can specialize A at this place. So this is a specialization module P. And then the same thing holds that G contains such a conjugate. But this time, not of the specialization, but of this product, some kind of twist. Okay, and as I said before, to prove this, you show that these specializations at P extend to specializations of the PV ring. You specialize your fundamental solution matrix. You consider the conjugate of this matrix with this uh, specialized fundamental solution matrix. And then you can use the theorem of Chevalier, which says that your Galvago can be written as a stabilizer of the line. And then you compute that this um, conjugated matrix is in a stabilizer. So, are you, so let's say go back to the alpha. Mm -hmm. um, do you mean that after you conjugate A sub alpha over uh, F Q bar mm -hmm. power series T, mm -hmm. um, you actually land up without the well, F Q bar? Well, that, that's, yes, that, that's well, what it says. Of course, not for any matrix in here, but there is a matrix in here right. such that if you conjugate this, yeah. you land in here. Yeah, that, so, that's FQ, not FQ. Yeah, that's bar. FQ. That's FQ. Mm -hmm. right. And that's important. Yeah, right. Because that somehow things got cancelled yeah. out. So there sense. are no, not that many um, choices here. Okay. Yeah. So in our example, F is 1 over 1 minus TS. And then you know that our group is in FL2, and it contains the conjugate of, so here, every alpha in FQ is allowed, because this is never zero. So it contains the conjugate of all of these matrices. And um, this criterion is made for cases where you would like to show that your Galvago equals H, and you have a nice set of generators of H, meaning that you know that after conjugation, they still generate H. And you, you have such set of generators for many groups, such as classical groups. And then you can, you can find explicit matrices um, for the classic groups, classical groups, for example. Um, so now I would like to say that this proposition is inspired by a theorem in finite Galvan theory due to Matza from 2004, which basically says that this proposition is true. He, he 
phrase it, phrases it a bit different, but he, he basically says that this proposition is true in case A is in G at N of F huge S. Right? And so sigma is just the ordinary for venue, so, so that's a statement about finite Galois theory. And this proposition is a generalization to difference equations. And so this theorem says that every specialization, no, yeah, for every specialization, there's a conjugate that con that's contained in the Galois group. And if you look at the proof closely, then you see that the converse also holds, meaning if you have an element and you find a Galois theory here, then you can find a place where this element is conjugate to the specialization. Finite case of A's here. Let's say we have a difference equation over F cube S. So it's a finite Galois group, finite constant subgroup of G at N. FQ actually. And then every element in your Galois group can be obtained as a conjugate of such a specialization. P is such that you can specialize this A naught at this place. So let's say piece of degree G and such that G is conjugate, so I'm just writing it till now, G is conjugate to this specialized product. Well here the sigma is just the ordinary for venus. And here the conjugation is over FQ bar. What you need to do to prove this is, is um, to apply the Chibotar density theorem because the proof of that shows that um, you're looking for a place P such that this specializes here, which is true for almost all P, and such that G, which is in the Galois group, acts as the Forbenius, is in a decomposition group of P and acts as the Forbenius on the residue field. And the Chibotar of density theorem says that there are infinitely many such places P. So by your previous remark, I think, None of these are constructive. Hmm? None of these are constructive, just existence. Um, in, yeah, because the, the Chibotar the density theorem, it's not, yeah. You don't only know that such a P exists. I don't even think you know what the degree is. Okay. Yep. No bound on D. I don't think, I don't know. <laughs> that, that, I mean, that would be interesting for the implication, but I, I, don't, I don't know about that. Now for the inverse problem. There's a theorem. So the, yeah. excuse me. Mm -hmm. So prop four, the yes. P depends on G, is that right? Yes, P depends on G. And there are finitely many such G's. So here's the theorem of Norman from 85. It's a theorem about finite Galois theory and characteristic P, and it says that you have a really simple, simply connected linear algebraic group over FQ, not important for my talk to know what this means, 
examples are SLN, symplectic groups, G2, all of them are semi simple connected. And so, sorry, mm -hmm. you mentioned finally many G, so you mean just taking the components of G and generic things from G? Well, this is a, this is a finite case, right? So this is finite Galois oh, theory over F finite theory. So okay. this is a finite group, it's a finite okay. constant linear algebraic group. Okay. Where the rational points everywhere are contained in here. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, this is the F2 rational points. This is a finite group. Is a finite Galois group over F cube S. contribution to the inverse problem over uh, FQ of S, which is still an open problem. You, we still don't know which finite groups are going to over this field. We know it if you put a bar over the FQ, but not over this field. Right. Okay, so now this, um, the difference version of this theorem says that if you have such an H, so still over FQ, semi simple simple connected, then H is a linear algebraic group, not just the rational points. So H is a difference Galois group. Over FQTS. Which means there is a difference equation A over this field, such that there exists a PV ring for this equation, such that the Galois group of this PV ring is H. And so I would like to tell you about the proof. So it's not just a difference version of the theorem, it actually uses this theorem and builds up a difference equation from what is coming from here. So we use we first use this finite theory theorem Lowy. And you can translate that back to difference equations over this field, and then you actually get a difference equation that's not just contained in GLN but also in H. Which follows from this proof. Difference Galois group. Over FQ of S. And the idea is to extend to extend this A naught to power series A that's still a rational function and it's also contained in H. It as a power series, but we need to make sure that it comes from a rational function. And we also want this matrix to be contained in H because then we can apply these upper bounds. So if, if we, we do this, and if we choose A such that these coefficients here converge fast enough to zero, and it's not hard to do that by sticking up in enough powers of S then um, we know that there exists a PV ring for it. 
bring the edge back to position two. So the, the half part is to show that it, this is an equality, so that the Galois group isn't smaller than h. And that's where these lower bounds come in. So since uh, we know that A0 has group H of FQ, we can do this lower bound backwards, meaning applying to position 4, to first find places where the elements in H of FQ are conjugate to the specializations. So we can, but I only find that many elements in here. Order them, apply to position 4 to obtain places such that we can uh, specialize this matrix at these places and such that HI is conjugate to where PI has some degree DI. And then we, we will make sure that A also specializes at these places. So we, we will choose the denominators carefully so that we can do that. And then we can apply for position three, so in the forward direction. Skywalk of G contains conjugates of now specializing A, not just A not. Okay. So this is um, an element with entries in FQ D T. This is an element in FQ D. And if you modulo T, this equals this. Now we, we have some conjugation in here, but if you choose your fundamental solution matrix carefully, then you get that this has constant term HI. Right? Because this one has that as constant term. So this is HI, this FQ matrix, plus higher order terms. And so now, now what we have obtained now is a group theoretic um, statement that for every element in this finite group exists a G Can be written as a power series in T, and it starts with H. So H plus some higher order terms. And I call this condition star. these elements G are contained in here. Of course, that's not enough to um, generate the group because these are all a finite order. So these, these still generate only a finite group, but all of H of a Q. And we only need, in addition, a maximal torus to generate the group. That's a purely group theoretic proposition. Saying that if H is connected and inducted, in particular, it applies to all semi simple, simply connected groups. But in addition, I want this, so over FQ, in addition, I want this to be split over FQ. That means, yeah. 
Nexus, a Nexus Notorious that splits over SQ. So every Nexus Notorious is isomorphic over FQ bar to some copies of GL1, and it's called FQ split if this isomorphism can be chosen over FQ. And, and let's say you have a subgroup with this condition, and such that G contains this maximal torus or the conjugate. Technical now. So the conjugate matrix is a power series over FQ bar, but the constant term is in FQ. But yeah. some conjugate of T has to be containing G, then G equals H. So for our Gavar group, since we know the star. In addition, we only need to know that there's this maximum torus contained in G. And how we do, do we do this? We have to specialization proposition three. So we only need to make sure that our matrix A specializes to something that generates a dense subgroup of this maximum torus. Um, should I stop now, or should I? No. Oh, 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 we have about 25 minutes. Hmm? Okay. We have 25 okay. minutes. Oh. We didn't assume that it's FQ split. Um, uh, oh, when I come to think about it, I think I forgot to write something on the board. I'm sorry. So I, I have to write this down the theorem again. So that I don't write down something wrong. I think I forgot to put something in here. So H is as above, simply connected, uh, semi simple over FQ. Yeah. But then, I said it wrong. Then you need to have a finite constant extension. So maybe you can correct that. So then there exists an I in N such that H is a different Galvago over F to I S T. Sorry about that. And the, the sigma is um, then mapping s to s to the q to the i power. Okay. So we need to we need to do a finite constant extension. So before I said that h is a difference derivative over f q of s t, but that's not true. We need to do f q to the i s t, and it's a sigma i, which mean, means it maps s to To the I part. Why don't you write sigma or up or i then? That's what I was trying to huh? Why oh, don't you write yeah. sigma or up or i? I guess it's the same, yes. Yeah. Thanks. All <laughs> right. Thanks. Finite extension of constant 